what's happening for the MPFL in 2024? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So if you're new, NPFL is going to be called, is from here on out, is going to be called The League. They've been around for three years, just kind of grinding it out. And they started off on a really high note, and then last year at the end, they only had 72 or 74 anglers competing for $100,000. But with all the news of anglers being cut and so forth from BPT, and just a lot of pros looking at the $100,000 to win, it kind of makes sense that the, the League has a full field, and that's what they're going to field for 2024. They have 127 committed anglers to fish the league, and that's very promising for them. So if you can do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I think you should be a subscriber. So click the subscribe button and become part of the team and family. And we're going to go through the list of some of the named anglers that are joining the league this season. But quite honestly, I thought there would be more people from MLF and the elites joining the, the league. I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. There were some names that were thrown out that we're going to try to, to fish the league but it just didn't come through maybe scheduling conflicts or they just didn't like the schedule that's going on for the season and i think that's one of the downfalls of the league this year so again if you're new npfl the national professional fishing league is is putting out they, they do six tournaments and a championship every year they do pay out a hundred thousand dollars to the winner and this is a fairly new circuit are they the best of the best no no is it a working man's league more than a professional league probably that's just my opinion. I think there's a lot of weekend warrior anglers or guys that are patch pirates that have patches all over but really aren't sponsored by those people. And there's a group, a handful of anglers that are very well named, like Patrick Walters, who has just done phenomenal in two years on or fishing the league. He's won three or four tournaments and collected a couple hundred thousand dollars. John Cox, the Mike DeBerry boy just right down the street, done has done very well on, on the MPFL. But this year they're also gonna they're bringing in more anglers. Anglers like Angler of the Year from the Elites. Kyle Welcher. We have Tommy Biffle that's going to be on there. David Fritz, who couldn't compete with the elites and now is has retired and is now going to try to compete against the Everyday Warrior. And it'll be fun to see how he does because he has been the bottom of the barrel on the elites for about 10 or 12 years. How will he do fishing against normal Joes like myself or Patch Pirates? We're going to find out. I don't think he's going to do that well, but there's always hope. Going from that elite field to the MPFL is a drastic drop in competition, but we'll see how he does this year. And other anglers like Zach Burge from the BPT and Tommy Biffle will be fishing the league this season, as well as a bunch of other really, really good anglers. There's probably 10 or 12, 15 branded named anglers that are going to fish the league in 2024. And I think there is one female angler, and I hope she kills it. Stephanie, I don't even know how to say her last name, but Stephanie, I hope you crush it. Now, this is just my opinion. I think that the MPFL has a great opportunity to boost themselves in 2024. They still need to continue to make a lot of drastic improvements. And this is just from someone who watches Bass, watches BPT, did a bunch of radio stuff and crap in the YouTube channel now. I think there's certain things that the MPFL must change immediately if they want to compete with the big guys. Because right now, I think they're probably the number six tournament, tournament group overall. I think the elites and BPT are, of course, the best. The Invitationals and the Opens are still a better group of anglers fishing. Better named, just a better group. And then I do think the Toyota Series has better anglers than, than PFL, except those few Cox, Walters, Welchers. Those guys are just elite, top elite anglers. But I still think they're prob MPFL is probably sixth in line. And I'd, I'd like to see them get to that fifth level. But to do so, they've got to make some drastic changes, in my opinion. And I've got nine suggestions that I doubt they'll listen to, but they're my suggestions. Number one, whatever that phyrix or phyx website that you're going to post your videos on for people to watch nix it put it on youtube and put it on facebook i know you don't get the numbers you want on there but i looked at one of the days that that NPL, mpfl was fishing on that station and it had exactly 72 unique visitors that day that sucks that just sucks that means nobody's watching it put it on youtube and put it on facebook make it free with standing with that whatever the thing was with fat cat and luke afterwards that people paid for i would love to know how few people watch that because i don't know if nobody's watching the original part of it why would we pay for luke and fat cat's 
expertise afterwards. So get rid of the PHYX website and just stream it on YouTube and Facebook and live with the numbers that you have. Number two, don't make it something that we have to pay to watch. It's hard enough to get on a website that is just no named, but pay, having people pay for something to watch it is, it's pointless. There's so much free stuff out there for us to watch. Why would we pay for anglers we've never heard of. Don't even know. So stop making it a pay event if for, for any of it. Make it all free. Do away with any payment stuff. My third suggestion is, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, it's time to update the color commentators. I like Luke, I don't know him at all. We've talked a few times. I like Fat Cat, he doesn't know who I am anymore. But I think you either need to add somebody else or add some more people in there to talk about fishing or to ask the right questions as it's going on. I would like to see more informative, interesting topics while it's happening. Why an angler is doing this, why an angler is doing that, instead of just trying to be funny. And I'm not trying to throw shade on Luke or Fat Cat. I'm not. I really mean that. But I think adding someone or some other people to help them makes your broadcast much better. My fourth suggestion is reduce the field on the third day. There's too much going on. I love that you have, there's a possibility of someone coming from way from behind and getting into the top 10, but it just doesn't happen. Make the third day a limited group of anglers so that you can get with the people who are working or who are doing really well or have an opportunity to get to there. If you reduce the, the amount of anglers who are on the third day, it also reduces those anglers who are just sucking it up on the bottom an opportunity to go home a day early and not spend that extra money to rent a room or for gas or to do any of that. Reduce the field down to 24 or 32 or something, but don't make it all 127 boats out there on the last day. It really takes away a lot from a lot of the drama that could happen. If someone comes from 32 and comes up to win, then you want to shame on those other 31 anglers that they sucked it that bad that day. But someone that's out of the top 40 isn't really going to make a jump to the top 10. So cut the rest of the field and just focus on a limited group of anglers. Next, you guys got to do something about the website. There's just no information or nothing to make an angler go or a fan go to your website. There's no articles. There's no videos. There's no nothing. The website is just a place to hold stuff for that one spot. The website doesn't get many views either. You're lucky if you get 4,500 views, unique visitors a month. That's statistically proven, by the way. So do something about the website that attracts anglers to go to the website. Informative videos. Have Fat Cat do something. Have Luke do something. Have them work to make that money. But have the anglers and the other people be prominent on your website and do stories about those anglers so that you can spotlight an angler and their sponsors so that the sponsor at least gets something out of what's happening because there isn't anybody watching the live feed. Next, you got to become media friendly and social media oriented. Start putting clips of the anglers catching fish or the big fish if possible. Start doing little stories about the anglers or what's going on behind the scenes. Start talking about where you're going and the spots that you're doing. You must become social media oriented and make a, pre make a presence for the league, the anglers, and the sponsors because there just is nothing being said or done at all about the league at all. This isn't going to be a popular one, but Whoever picked the 2024 schedule didn't do a very good job. You're going to the wrong places at the wrong time in several events. If you're going to do it, as much as you don't want to be in a competition with the elites, and I understand that, you have to be in competition with the elites in BPT. You need to look at the best places to go fish that are going to catch a lot of fish at the right time so that you're, you're blossoming the anglers. I guess that's a weird way to say it. But you're making the anglers look like heroes. If they're out there catching one and a half pounders at the wrong time of the year, it isn't fun for anglers to watch. That's the truth. So rethink your schedule because the 2024 schedule is the worst I've ever seen in 20 years of covering bass. And lastly, while I appreciate that you allow the anglers to stand on stage and talk about their sponsors, you need to shorten the weigh-ins. 
127 people is probably going to take three and a half hours. And unless you have someone in the field that you really want to watch, anglers aren't going to watch three and a half hours of weigh-ins and people coming up and talking about their sponsors and how even though you caught five fish, you've got the best boat and the best uh, sponsor and the best baits, but you've only caught five fish for five pounds. No, shorten the weigh-ins. That includes the after show too. Don't make that pay. I think I said that earlier, but you need to shorten the weigh-ins and get it done faster. That's where day three comes in. Guys make day three, then give them the opportunity to talk a little bit more about the sponsors. Obviously, the baits they're using, if they're in the top 24, are working for them. The guy who's in 127, who's caught three fish for three days for two and a half pounds, he shouldn't be up there for five minutes. So shorten the weigh-ins. It'll keep people interested and it'll keep move things moving at a faster clip. Because right now, we generate stuff in about 15 to 20 seconds, as crazy as that sounds. Shorts and TikTok and all that stuff on Instagram is, is how people are viewing the internet. So they don't want to have a four or five minute rant on what the angler is doing and so forth. Get them up there, weigh them in, give them five seconds, move their asses off the, off the stage. Keep it going, keep it fast, faster pace. That will help keep, keep people interested in those weigh-ins. I do have a lot of hope for the MPFL. I covered the first event and had a good time. I think there's a lot of really good people behind the scenes at MPFL that don't get a lot of credit. Al and some of the other guys are just really good people. I said it before, they're very trustworthy and just are diehard anglers that want to do something different for the average Joe. They want to succeed. They've got a new owner in there that's taken over and has, I think, hopefully has a lot of new ideas for how to improve this. I know he's an angler. I can't say his name, but I know that I hope that he's willing to take some constructive criticism and look at it and go, you want to know what? Maybe this is something we need to do. It isn't from, this isn't coming from someone who just wants to be harsh. This is coming from someone who's watched NPFL for three years just fall flat. And I've seen things and watched things and I have a lot of ideas. And I think those nine things right off the bat could be improved on that could help the league succeed in 2024 and beyond. So are you gonna watch NPFL in 2024? Comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.